All right, everybody, we're back. Welcome to Nerds R Us, where anybody can be a kid. I'm here with my sexy co-host, Ike Siemens. What up, what up, fam? And Tyler Fox. What's going on? Today we got cartoons. Anything we loved from a kid to now, adult cartoons, kid cartoons. Let's start it off. All right, guys, we're talking old cartoons, cartoons we loved growing up. I personally enjoyed myself some Teen Titans, brought my favorite things together, cartoons and comic books. I was personally a fan of Beast Boy. There were some heartbreaking stories. Terra had to die. He had Slade slash Deathstroke as the main bad guy of the whole series, which obviously he was a total badass. I enjoyed shows like Rugrats and other stuff like that, things from Nickelodeon. What about you, Ike? Well, I mean, you got like Powerpuff Girls, TMNT, uh, Shaolin Showdown, Ah Real Monsters, um, Darkwing Duck. <laughs> Darkwing Duck. I forgot about Darkwing Duck. I remember when the Power Rangers movie came out, I went to go rent it from Blockbuster. Rest in like, peace. Which is the oldest shit anybody... <laughs> nope, there are probably some people who have listened to this podcast who have no idea what that is, but I remember I was so embarrassed about renting Powerpuff Girls because it was like a girls cartoon. I was like, he has written this for my sister. No big deal. Clearly not gay. You know? <laughs> not gay. <laughs> oh, man. And then, of course, my dad came up. He was like, you in your gay movie? <laughs> <laughs> dude, your dad was a savage, dude, all the time. I remember that shit. What did you prefer, Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Cartoon Network had its perks with, like, Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls. But then Nickelodeon, you got, like, Rocket Power, Doug, like, all the good ones, too. What is it? What is it about those little cartoons that were just like even now when you watch them, you're like, yeah, like this is some good shit. This is these are good characters. Your rocket power. I was like, dude, I could totally. That'd be so sick to go out with my bros and like do backflips off of the pier or some shit, which I never did because we don't have an ocean where we live. But <laughs> <laughs> we just backflipped off the fucking like parking lot. Yeah, I never. And shit I never hit, I never hit a big <laughs> ramp or anything like that. I never went surfing, but I was like, yeah. This, this show is pretty relatable. I'm, yeah, that's totally just me and my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Except for we uh, surf concrete and bust our ass when we fall. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Well, what, what, what made those shows super great, though? What is it? Dude, I, honestly, I feel like back in the day, back in our day, when old cartoons man. were on, yeah, old, old people day, um, when, you know, when we would watch our cartoons and stuff, I mean, they would have real relatable scenarios. So, I mean, when we'd watch them, they'd have relatable scenarios in the sense where, you know, certain friends would be, you know, at odds because they'd have different viewpoints on something or whatever. And they would come across these issues where, you know, they'd, you know, have to battle it out amongst themselves and whatnot. But the thing was, is back in our day, it was like a point to come back together as friends to complete the task at hand or like, you know, reunite and have that friendship still be intact at the end of the show. Whereas like modern shows, dude, like when I was, when I was babysitting for my cousin's kids and stuff, dude, watching them grow up and helping them grow up and, you know, teaching them morals and responsibilities and stuff when they wanted to watch their cartoons, you know, like, um, what's that monsters high or whatever, oh, dude, I watched one episode of that. The very first episode I ever watched when I was, wa- when I was, you know, watching the kids or whatever, um, I was watching that episode and one of these little bitches is on there being conniving little fuck, like backstabbing her friends, throwing them under the bus, like doing all this just shady shit, shady ass shit. Right. At the end of the episode, all that happened was this little bitch said sorry. Dead serious. I am dead ass about that. I am 100% legit. Like, she was, like, literally the shittiest person alive to all of her friends. And then comes back, and all of her friends forgive her. And they're like, oh, it's cool, whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, sorry, guys. So you're saying you are saying you miss, like, the life lessons morals. that are taught. Yeah, they were teaching us morals as kids. Like, SpongeBob's about the seven deadly sins. You got everything from... Mr. Crab being greed and Patrick being like gluttony. And then Rocket Power, they always have some situation where they get messed up in and then they kind of turn against each other. But at the end, they work together to. Yeah, solve I remember the one episode of Rocket Power where the main guy 
what was his name? Uh, something like T something. Oh, dude, but it was like a situation where like his idol was this guy who like surfs during like storms or whatever. And his dad was like, that's not safe. Like you probably shouldn't do that. That's a stupid idea or whatever. And then it was like a whole situation of like your heroes aren't always like as good as they, you think they are and yeah. shit like that. And they totally like struck a chord with me as a kid or in Rugrats where it was like, you know, if we all work together as a team, we can make things happen. We can still be friends, but also accomplish our goals and save our grandpa from getting auctioned off or some stupid <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> and I loved, I loved Doug. I loved Doug. I mean, that didn't really have like a ton of life lessons in it. What a catchy theme song! Yeah, ever. super catchy. It didn't have a ton of life lessons, but it was just ridiculously entertaining. His dog was named Pork Chop. I mean, his dog had a personality, he had a personality, he wore his underwear on the outside of his pants when he was quailing in. It was just super fun, entertaining, engaging. I mean, I remember Hey Arnold, where he lived with his grandparents and stuff like that, and he had to learn to, like, live life without his parents. Yeah, that stuff was awesome, and it's super good for kids, and I, I miss that stuff, and you definitely don't see that nowadays. Also, I don't think, and this is probably just, like, an old man even though I'm only 23, I consider I consider myself old by watching like new cartoons and shit like that. I feel like animation has just gotten really super lazy when it comes to cartoons. Dude, Dragon Ball Super, oh my god! And like, I don't get me wrong. Like, I understand that there was a couple of of scenes here and there in, in Dragon Ball Z and stuff that that weren't necessarily the greatest in animation. But holy cat, like. Dude, this is ridiculous anymore. Like, it's just gotten so lackadaisical that there's half assed scenes where there's like, you know, four or five seconds where the animation is like the worst thing. Like, I could draw better than that. I know four year olds who could draw better than that. Like, my daughter could draw better than that. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. I was just like, they're like, let's just give him a weird shaped head because we can't actually draw like a circle and give him a personality and that his personality will be that he's got like a weird shaped head because we don't know how to draw a circle or like how about instead of transitioning from a scene like in a cool or like you know moving the story by transition in the scene we're just cut to a different scene and oh no now they're doing this other thing it just it's, it doesn't seem like there's any effort pit into the drawing of these shows anymore i mean there were occasional like you know diamonds in the rough that i see that are like you know like gravity falls or like Adventure Time that are shows where I'm like, Steven I would have, that I, yeah, Steven Universe, <laughs> yeah. I would have appreciated those shows. I still appreciate them. I think they're great, but I would have watched those shows as a kid. I can see how those shows are similar to the shows I enjoyed and I watched as a kid, but it's just like the majority of the stuff, it's like total drama island. And it's just like, what is this? Oh, it's like a kid's reality show about people not being like shitty and people also constantly being shitty but maybe learning a life lesson every five to six episodes. But in general, it's basically like watching MTV minus any remote music. <laughs> With cartoons. <laughs> With cartoons. It's well, I mean, shit, dude. Look at the, look at the like, idols of, like, a couple years back. Bratz dolls. God. Literally, uh, Bratz, Bratz is the name. <clears throat> That's the name. Which, like, when I was, you know, when I was growing up, I'm sure you guys are growing up, dude, when, you're, when you were being a fucking dick kid, your parent called you a brat because I meant you were being a shitty person. Yeah. And that's like an idol now. That's like an icon. Like, brat dolls. And I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, bratty little shits. Okay, sure. That's what you want to teach your children. Good job. What was a, what was a character from like kid shows in the 90s that you guys really enjoyed that you watched where you were like, I love this character. I don't know what it is about this character or even if there was something about the character in particular that you liked where you were like, this character is a shit. Raphael from TMNT. Raphael from sure, sure, Is it because he was an anger monster? And he, an anger monster? Yeah, he was definitely a he was definitely a rage monster. He he always uh, took action first and asked questions later, and that was something I definitely relate to, like relate Ted to previously and currently still sometimes relate. To. Yeah, but at least in the old TMNT show, like when he did that, he learned his lesson, and like over throughout the like show, he like learned how to control his anger and not be such a hothead, which was super nice. And work together as a team and stuff. And that's the other thing is it like showed the other people, you know, um, like from those episodes or whatever. Like if, if other people related more to like Mikey or like Donatello or any of those guys, um, if they related more to those characters or whatever, it showed them how to cope and relate to that situation and be able to overcome and still be a team effort in the end and stuff. And that's what helped like, I mean, God, dude, I have friends from, 
20 years ago that I barely talked to. But guess what? Like, every time we talk, it's like not a day has gone by. We're still, like, amazing friends because that's what we grew up with is is learn how to, like, cope with each other and, like, you know, learn Build with relationships with yeah. people. Yeah. Raphael, know? what about you, Tiaz? What about you? you got a character that was brought to life for you in real life in a way or a character that you even just thought were, like, yeah, that guy's a badass. Like, I'd love to be that guy. Dude, Bugs Bunny. Dude. Is it because he was a cross-dresser? No, no <laughs> you know it. I mean, come on, I wear my panties from time to time. <laughs> so but, did Doug, bro, it's okay. But, I mean, he's just, like, a morally just person, you know? He never does anything wrong. He's always helping people out when he can. Yeah, Bugs Bunny, I love Bugs Bunny, but, man, that guy was super political in every episode. Oh, for real. There were some episodes where he's like, oh, you're going to take my land? But what if I just, like, jackhammer you off this cliff or some shit? <laughs> and I was like, oh, dude, why can't I do that to the government? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if you stole my money, but, uh, oh, wait, no, it's in another country, so good luck with that. But what's weird is in those, in those old, like, those old classic Bugs Bunnies, like, cartoons and stuff like that, all the stuff that was in those cartoons would totally not fly today. That would totally oh, be, it would be pulled off TV in a minute. With, like, the cross-dressing and, like, the shooting each other in the face with guns and stuff. And I was about to say, no, 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 here's the thing. Is cross-dressing would be acceptable, but the shooting each other in the face with guns, that would definitely not be acceptable. They'd be like, this is how we get violent people and shooting up schools and, and stuff. And then and then CNN would have their, their that one kid from the 14 different fucking school shootings that can't go back to his school that he's also been in 14 other school shootings in and... and be feel safer or whatever <laughs> oh god well do you think do you think any of those things messed you up as a kid do you think any of those those themes that were in those old cartoons that were maybe a little more risque for the time you want to know what messed me up as a kid what messed me up as a kid was people not controlling their own kids and so me having a shitty influence by having these little bastard children run around and fucking hit their teachers and hit other people and then ex assume that it was perfectly acceptable behavior or whatever and not get their ass beat in front of the whole fucking class like I would. You know, like, my parents, man, if I threw a tantrum out in public, dude, I still remember Dunsky. this. I remember this to this day, man. One time, with my own money that I saved up, I decided that I wanted to buy a Game Boy Advance SP and my dad didn't want me to buy it that very same day. He was like, hey, hold on to it for a day, think about it overnight, and then if you still want to, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll buy it. And I was like, no, I want it right now. And he wouldn't let me have it right now, and I got mad. And I, well, I didn't, like, throw a tantrum as, like, nowadays tantrums, but I was like, this is bullshit. And I, like, went to storm away, and he caught me, he yoked me up by the arm, literally picked my ass off the ground, and beat me everywhere from my fucking bottom side of my calves to the back side of my neck. And it wasn't like a little pop on the butt, you know, it was like hauling off and, and backhanded me and shit, dude. Like I caught one in the ribs because I was turning from the pain and it definitely knocked the breath out of me. And I guess you don't want to know what happened. I did not act a fool ever in public again because I was like, I got beat down like a little fool. <laughs> like, I was like, I got the smack down laid down on me. I was embarrassed as shit and I never did that shit again. That's the end of that situation. <laughs> like, so you learned that lesson partially oh, from dude. getting a beat ass and possibly oh. from like watching cartoons? Yeah, hell yeah, man. I mean, I, I figured it was coming because I was like, but what if this was a movie? It's kind of like that Boondocks episode. <laughs> but what if this was a movie? <laughs> and then I got my ass beat down. And I was like, well, life lesson learned there. I'm definitely not doing that shit again. <laughs> I feel it. Probably the character I remember relating most to, and I remember because I was like, it's like, Mom, we have to get the toys and stuff like that. It was probably Teen Titans Beast Boy because he was just like, no, nah, dude, I just want to like hang out with my friends and have a good time and we can just all be friends without fighting each other. And obviously they fought like every second of every single day type situation. And there was like, you know, they were constantly fighting bad guys and having inner conflicts. But in the end, they always became friends. And I was like, yeah, dude, I totally, I can relate to that because that's the same exact thing that I would want for myself and for my friends and my family. And also, I mean, the ability to turn into any animal you want is something I always wanted as a kid. Because I was like, I love animals, but I also love kicking ass. 
So if I could do both, if I could mix those two loves together into one single like job, which is be an ass as an animal, I would be all about it. <laughs> Life would be complete. See, I, would, I related more to Slade, and I was like, complete and total chaos and destruction, let's fuck shit up. <laughs> or uh, Red X. <laughs> Red Robin, X, yeah. Robin going Red X, dude, that was dope. Was there a show that like we watched as a kid that when it ended, you were just like, oh, that's over, like all of them. You got like sad. All of them, yeah, man. I was like, won. dude. Even I heard SpongeBob is probably ending soon or whatever, and I was like, yeah, I was my late twenties, and that's still heartbreaking. Yeah, I was heartbroken by that, dude. I saw that shit on Facebook, and I was like, that's depressing as fuck. Like, I still watch that to this day. <laughs> but do you think the rules of TV shows were like, you know, TV shows? I think TV shows should never go past more than ten seasons before you've like exhausted a character and you've exhausted like a a group of people in a setting, at least with, like, TV with real people in it. Do you think those same rules apply to cartoons? Hell no. Look at The Simpsons. Look at The Simpsons. They're, like, 25 years strong. They should have been They're predicting the fucking future. They They are predicting the future still. (laughs) Like, every goddamn year that something stupid happens, Simpsons predicted it. How long long is is Bart and Lisa going to be, like, five and seven? Forever. It's a cartoon. That's that's what doesn't get old about. They can do... Anything and everything possible because it's beyond the limits of real life. What about adult cartoons? I mean, you got like Rick and Morty, you got Final Space that just came out, you got Metalocalypse, which is one of my favorites of all time. <laughs> it's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, I, and I would even say Gravity Falls and Gravity Adventure Falls. Times are on the borderline of adult They're like cartoons. like right between kid and adult. Yeah, do you think. Brickleberry. Do you um, think those. <laughs> Brickleberry. Yeah, do you think those same shows follow the other rules of cartoons or do you think they follow the rules of like adults where it's like enough is enough i think i think typically they follow more adulty rules like even the the kind of the teen into adult transitional shows like i mean even like uh well major laser i don't know if anybody's seen major laser but i mean that that's a baller ass show and it was super fun and entertaining it wasn't necessarily like I mean, there was some like moralistic standards in every t- every single episode, but at the same time, like it was mostly for entertainment and stuff. And it was definitely more adult themed as it was going over drugs and whatnot. But at the same time, it was like it was a really fun show. But they they definitely kept that more adultish where they were like, here here's one episode, or I mean one se- uh, season, and it was and it was done, you know, and that was that was the end of it. Hopefully, I mean, I wish they would bring it back and throw some more fire down. But, I mean, at the same time, like, it was a definitely respectable, like, show for the for the short run that it had, you know what I mean? So, so you think they should have a shorter run than, like, a kid's cartoon? Not necessarily should have, but I feel like it's more acceptable for adult cartoons, more adult-themed cartoons, um, just because that's, I mean, it's a busy world out there and stuff, and to keep things entertaining and you fresh You don't have time to sit down every Saturday yeah. morning. That's the same cartoons. thing like why Rick and Morty keeps taking so long every season to come out. They just, they want it to be perfect. They're taking their time on it. They're not rushing anything, you know? Mm-hmm. And as adults, we're like, I really want to see it, but I'll wait. I, I, I can wait. That. I got a ton <laughs> of you got a little shit more. To watch. I want it to be patience. good. I don't want it to suck, you know, and just have something to watch. Like Dragon Ball Z, bunch of filler episodes here and there, you know? Like, <sighs> I wish they would have just kept to the story, kept shit going. It would have taken a little longer, but I would have been okay with it. Dragon Ball Super was a lot more action packed, but at the same time, that whole first story arc sucked ass. I mean, that was trash. The whole Zamasu arc was garbage, in my opinion. And I haven't watched any Dragon Ball Super because I asked somebody what they thought of it who was a Dragon Ball Z fan. I don't think it was you. I think it was someone else, and they were like, "It's good if you like have nostalgia about Dragon Ball Z, but that's about as far as it goes." But I feel like that's a lot of situation. I mean, they brought Shaolin Showdown back for like a a second like story arc and. I watched one episode and I was like, off. <laughs> Guess I'm going to go for a jog. I mean, I, I didn't, go, I didn't go for a jog. I clearly just sat in my underwear and drank beer. But. <laughs> <laughs> Samurai Jack reboot is going to be sick. He's supposed to come back like more aggressive, more like... It's supposed to be more adult. Adult-y. Yeah. It's well, going to be on Adult Swim, I think. Did they already drop that? Yeah. I haven't watched it yet, though. Yeah. Dude, so I watched one episode of I that. I think I watched I the opener. I happened to catch one episode of that, and I'm stoked to finish watching it. But I just have a ton of other shit that I'm trying to keep up on as well and stuff. So. Yeah. Dude, it's hard to keep up on everything. It's hard to keep up on everything for sure because it's like... 
do I really need to go to work today? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're sitting there in the shitter spam in an episode. You're like, this is a half an hour shit, but I don't give a fuck because i got to finish this episode before I go help more dickheaded customers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so if you were to pick like your favorite adult cartoon that's come out that you would watch by yourself, but definitely not let your kids watch if you had kids or in Tiaz's case, have a kid, what's a show that you would watch but never let your kids watch? Until they were like old enough to know everything in the show, mm-hmm. which nowadays it's like ten. But <laughs> right. still, what's a show that you would not want to let your kids watch? That's a cartoon where you would be like, "Yeah, I love this show." Mister Pickles. Mr. Pickles. <laughs> True. <laughs> like I watch that sometimes, and I like at the end of the episode, I'm like, "Did I really just sit through that whole thing? <laughs> that <laughs> shit's some ridiculous. demented shit." <laughs> Yeah, probably. But then I go to the next episode and I watch it again. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, probably for me, it was Metalocalypse. That was yeah, my favorite because they were always like, one. we're going to fuck all the girls and do a bunch of drugs. But check out this sick metal song. About Are you coffee. crying? No, it's just drugs. <laughs> it's just drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love, I love that a lot because I was super bummed when it got canceled, but then they made like a last musical episode. Yeah, that, that shit was, was so super epic, dude. good. I it can't was... believe, dude, I didn't even know about that until T Haas showed me it. I, I showed you that, dude. Don't be mixing up your Tylers. What, really? I showed you that on freaking cable. Get out of here. Ah, uh, weird. But you watched, <laughs> which was funny because the first episode I showed you was the last episode that ever aired on regular TV before they had to make, before they canceled it. And they left it on a cliffhanger, and then they had to make the movie. Took the movie to finish it out. Well, yeah, I see how it is. You're yeah. racist. All Tyler's all the same. <laughs> yeah, all I Tyler's all the same. Well, you're no both blonde. <laughs> both wearing both glasses. Tyler's, and you're both glasses. Yeah, so like this, this kind of all, all right. this is all blurring together. Like I said, man, I can lose gaps of months to years without even noticing it anymore. I'm too old. I'm too. Well, I'm too not giving a fuck is what it is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to name some shows, and then you guys just give me a yes or no on if you would consider watching the whole thing all the way through again. Teen Titans. Yes. Definitely. Justice League? Definitely. Yeah. Justice League Unlimited? Definitely. Yeah. SpongeBob? Yes. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Neutron? Uh, hold on. SpongeBob? Probably not. It's too long. Too many seasons. I can't sit through all that again. I remember when that first uh, came out. True. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, well, it depends... Are we doing like currently? Would we currently rewatch them? Yeah, currently rewatch them. No, nah, I can I can rewatch SpongeBob. Like if There's you could get a week, if you could get a week off work, I don't think you could fit it into a week. To be honest, fuck yeah, man, you could just not sleep. True. You might need drugs you'd have to do to stay awake to do it, but I mean, still, it's worth it. <laughs> right, uh, Rugrats. Yeah. Uh, actually, I did try to watch it, and I couldn't make it. It was no. it didn't hold up. It was kind of like I was about to say. It's kind of like Beetleborgs for me when I try to rewatch it. I was just like. Man, I just fucking can't do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Yeah, there are some Power Rangers that I've tried to watch. Where I'm like, Did you no. Know me? Remember when we all sat down and tried to watch one of the movies on Netflix that one night? I was just oh. like, oh, this is horrible, dude. Like How 15, 15 minutes, 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 Nope. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we couldn't find nothing. Well, until we found Fern Gully again. Fern Gully. Oh, Fern Gully. <laughs> <good. That's> classic. <laughs> All right. Oh, would you guys consider, is there any new shows that are specifically geared towards kids, not adult cartoon shows that have come out that you would actually consider sitting down and watching all the way through? Steven Universe. Steven Universe. Yeah, I can, I can, I can get behind that. that one. It's pretty funny, dude. It's like, actually pretty I've funny. seen a few episodes. It is pretty entertaining. It's like honestly. weirdly like funny, and it's not even like adult funny. It's still like kid funny, but I'm like, huh, that's pretty funny. Well, it's a stupid little fat kid, and that's what I grew up as. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally fucking relatable for my dumb ass. <laughs> would you guys watch? Would you guys watch Steven U- or not Steven Universe? Would you guys watch Adventure Time all the way through? Oh, yeah. I have multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I love that show. Times. All right, so now we're at a pointer episode. It's running a little bit long, but. Fuck it. We're going to do a new head-to-head today. We're going to do Jimmy Neutron versus Rick Sanchez. Old school versus new school. Kid versus adult. We got me and Ike Siemens in the ring of Mr. Jimmy Neutron. Boy genius. We got T-Haas in the ring of Rick Sanchez. Let's uh, battle yeah, it out. Going down. <laughs> <laughs> this is the theme song. All right, <laughs> Jimmy Neutron. Boy wonder. Gigantic brain with a gigantic head. He's flown through space, he's traveled through time, he's switched bodies, he invented pants that hang themselves up, he's done everything, he's got himself superpowers before, 
He's an all-around badass, and also he worked at a fast food joint like all kids do. <laughs> Piaz, what do you bring to the table for Rick Sanchez? What's, what's dude, Rick it? Sanchez, also a super genius, but he fucks with portals, dude. And <laughs> if you watch the Purge episode, he's got, like, the exosuits that, like, fuck people up. This guy, he's just selfless. Like, when it comes down to it, always watch out for Numero Uno, Rick Sanchez. So what do you think is going to bring him on the top of this fight? What would... What would be the deciding factor that he would able to bring to the table that would wipe out Jimmy Neutron from the faith of the earth and rip his parents' heart out? He's already been okay with killing his family in other universes and just going to a different dimension and just living life like it didn't happen. Like, he he can just, like, kill a kid and he'd be like, all right. True, but I mean, but I mean, that does take a toll on him over time, you know? I mean, look at his drinking habits and... He tried to kill himself one time. He passed out, but didn't kill himself. His need to do drugs and and do crazy experiments to get wild now. He almost lost his his family from C-137, and he almost couldn't cope with it. But as a pickle, he defeated the Russian mafia. As a pickle, in a pickle's body, as a pickle. Yeah, that's, I mean... It came from just the pickle, rolled into the sewer... Figured out how to kill some rats, made fucking body parts linked to his mind that he, like, to the rat's mind. He used his tongue to just get out of there and then went through a whole Russian mafia and played tongue out. drums to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to, defeat, <laughs> to defeat the rat king. Yeah, but Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron did save his whole family and everybody else's parents from a giant chicken. So. <laughs> Rick probably created the giant chicken. <laughs> Sent it to that dimension. Right, he's like, ah, eh, fuck these guys. <laughs> this is big headed fuck. Right, so, I mean, they both got space travel underneath their belt. They both got super geniuses, but Rick's got the interdimensional travel and like zero fucks given, whereas Jimmy Neutron's got some, some tie ups family wise and things like that, which Rick sometimes has, but sometimes doesn't has. So, I mean, are we going to make an official call on it? Let's take a vote. T. Haas, where are you standing on this? I gotta go with my buddy Rick. Mike Siemens? I mean, with the, uh, with the aggressiveness of, of Rick's personality, I would, I would say the, the likely winner would probably be Rick Sanchez. Uh, as much as I hate to betray my childhood, I would also vote Rick Sanchez. There it is, guys. Rick Sanchez is the winner for today's Head to Head. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thanks so much for listening. We appreciate it. Definitely check us out on nerdsarrest.com, which is our website where you can download and listen to all our episodes. You can also find us on YouTube at NRDSRUS, mm-hmm. NerdsRS. We're also on Facebook. Ike, where else are we at? We're on Instagram. Follow us. Give us some likes. Um, check out our entertaining bullshit. Um, it's now going to be me and T. Haas running that stuff. So any nerdy, fun stuff that we happen to run across, um, any fitness or fun that we're doing, we'll try to include you guys in on. Um, and then feel free to follow us on Patreon. And you know, if you feel if you feel like you like our stuff and you want to support us and help us do more entertaining stuff and branch out, get some more people on here and do some more fun, entertaining things where we can bring you guys along. Uh, feel free to throw us some on there. So, Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Daily tweets about great stuff. Nerds are us one. All right, guys. And that's pretty much everywhere we are except for in our homes masturbating. So feel free to check <laughs> us out. Love you. Appreciate you checking out the podcast. And have a great day.